everybody, this is Perch. One of the uh, weirder arguments that I think has come up with comics is, what age are we in? Now, put a, hang on now for a second. Put away your sarcasm. We can call this the, the shit age, the uh, garbage age, the rust age. I don't know, there's been lots of speculation there, but just put it away for a minute. Imagine, if you will, that you still love comics, and that uh, you're, you're looking at the golden age, the silver age, the uh, bronze age, you know, all these different kind of ages in comics. What are they going to call this one? You know, they're not going to call it the garbage age or the shit age. They're not going to call it that. So what are they going to call it? The tin age? I, I, there's lots of good jokes to be made. Feel free in the comments right now. Throw them in there. All the kind of wacky names you want to have for this current age. There's plenty of good jokes to be made. But once you're done with that, let's kind of move on and try and figure this out. So here's a viewer mail. I'm going to read it. Here's somebody taking a stab at it. It says, hey, Perch, I hope this email finds you well. Well, well enough. You know, I get to go to Poland uh, soon, and uh, I don't want to go to Poland. But to help perch out, come on, YouTube, give me my fucking money. So I don't have to, I'm just kidding. YouTube's not paying anywhere remotely enough to keep me from going to goddamn Poland. Anyway, um, let's read this. Uh, one of the most annoying debates going on right now is the one between people who insist comics have never been better and the people who insist everything is awful. No shit. That, that debate sucks ass. It is between two groups of jackass people who have no interest in comics. That's my belief. I think the best way to end this debate is if we start to view the last 10 years or so years as the gilded age of comics. Okay. All right. Let's see where this one goes. The gilded age of comics. The historical American Gilded Age, roughly 1870 to 1900, we're learning some today, was characterized as a time of rapid industrialization leading to incredible wealth and prosperity for some and exploitation and destabilization for others. Okay, that is, that is true. That is absolutely true. I'm now digging back into my memories of uh, history, and that is a correct read on that time period, the late 1800s, the Gilded Age. Okay. Is that today's comic age? Well, we'll find out what people think in the comments below. Plug, 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 subscribe to introduce to your friends. Don't forget, click the bell for notifications. These are all the things you're supposed to say in a video to make yourself popular. All right, back to the mail. I think the same could be said of modern comics. On the surface, these are the best of times. Comic book heroes finally become mainstream, making billions of dollars at the box office. Barely an inconvenience. Comic sales have never been higher if you include manga and Dogman, and it's easier than ever to self-publish. I agree with all those things. On the other hand, many in the comics industry are expected to work for starvation wages. Traditional superhero comics are losing readers, and comic strops are struggling. For every success on Kickstarter or Webtoons, there's hundreds who labor in obscurity, either because the algorithm doesn't favor their content or because there's way too much content in general. I believe the best way to describe this dichotomy is to see comics as being in the Gilded Age. Hopefully this approach will help people make better strategic decisions, or at the very least, stop the incessant online debates of whether things are great or terrible. Interested to hear your thoughts. I'm sold. The Gilded Age, there you go. I think it works. Look, uh, right now comic books are making money, lots of money, for people. Uh, Joe Casada walked away with a seven-figure paycheck. Didio, I think, was the same. There are lots of people who are making seven figures. Several of these people are pricks who will not buy drinks when you go see them in uh, conventions. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, um, maybe I'll edit out the name there. Anyway, um, the, the reality is there are people who are actually doing amazing in comics. Some of these people go online and uh, jeer at the people who say that comics are failing while conveniently ignoring their peers. They're not their peers, though, in all reality, and that's a wake-up lesson more people need to have, is that several comic creators who are happy to join in on the fun of shitting on people who are negative about comics are conveniently uh, forgetting about the fact that uh, several of the, uh, of the people in this industry are being left behind at, as you say, starvation wages. Look, if you're making $65 a page, and I know goddamn well several of you listening to this right now 
who are really excited about working for Marvel, you are making $65 a page. Okay? That is not a lot of money. Okay? I don't know if you've ever taken out the calculator, so go to your iPhone, assuming you have one, and uh, just, just tap in for a second, and we'll see if everybody else can do it along with me. $65 a page times 22. Are you ready? You are making $1,430 a month before taxes on a Marvel comic book. To put another way, you are, you're wasting your life. If that is the amount of money you're making, you are wasting your... But the royalties. Oh, fuck the royalties. You're not making royalties. You're making close to nothing. That is shit wages. Okay, you're making less than $1,500 for a comic being produced by Marvel, the company that is is spitting out billion-dollar movies. I know, and, and look, uh, it's a hard truth time. For those of you who, on a regular basis, believe that Vidayala is somehow you know controlling and burning down the entire industry, consider, if you will, that payment amount. And now Vita, oh, like, oh no, but Vita gets two or three comics a month. Oh, cool. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and raise that number to, what, $3,000? $4,000 a month? Seriously? That's shit wager. That, that's no money. You're making nothing. I mean, I you can still feel free to make fun of anybody. It's not all about money, but my God, you're making no money. I, I You know, I, I mean, to put it in perspective, if you have a job at Starbucks, at Starbucks... You are making more in a month. You you absolutely are. Oh, but you know I'm building up my resume. Okay, so how long are you gonna you know live in your parents' basement and do this kind of money? Like that's no money. It's, it's nothing. I mean, come on. At what point are we gonna start talking about that in the YouTube videos when we're putting out our YouTube video with a really spicy thumbnail image with like uh, you, know, you know us huffing and puffing, going shit, comics, fucking woke, fuck, fuck. When you're putting out that thumbnail, like yeah, the people you're talking about are making maybe fifteen hundred dollars a month, maybe before taxes. Who cares? That's like making a video complaining about the guy who fucked up your latte order. Except that guy's making more money. Like, seriously, at, at some point. I mean, you can point and laugh, sure, but come on. All right, sorry, I went off track a little bit. Um, I like the Gilded Age because right now there are people, we are in an imbalance. And this is going to sound very communism of me, but we are at a place where there are a handful of people who are undeserving shitheads who are making seven figures in comics. You know, and definitely there, you know, why, you know, some people, Joe Casada is making it like while he was at Marvel was, was raking in shitloads of money. There were creators in that company making poverty wages. Absolutely. In a world where you've got somebody who does dick all for the company making high dollar and, and people who are writing stories, which by and large are forgettable, making nothing. That is a toxic stew of a, of a, of a hellhole that is coming into it. Come on. Like, but I, I'm dialing it back. I recently, uh, I, I, I got some feedback that I've mellowed out a lot over the years. So I don't know where this particular video fits into that general dynamic, but that that's what we're living in right now. Like, how can you take any of this seriously? If that's where we're at, I think that uh, if you're if you're a fan, if you're enjoying some of this stuff, if you like comics and everything else, yeah, you should set your standards high. The details matter. The minutia matters. You should actually, you know, be, care about the quality of content that you're purchasing and consuming. And if you're making that content, you should also care. You should be very, very focused on making the best possible comic that you absolutely can. Not because, uh, you know, not because you pay, are paid well, although you should be but because that's the right thing to do. That is, that is what should happen. But, um, <laughs> there's way too much uh, truth being uh, spilled out right now. It's aggravating. It's aggravating to be in this world where comics are coming out. They're by and large. I, I mean, I mean, I often find that I agree 
with some of the very negative things that, that are said about comics in videos, but I, I agree for different reasons than the people that, than what they say. The reasons people say are like, oh, you know, it's about politics and about, you know, gender identity and it's blah, 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 blah. And, and it, the woke, I mean, it's, it's, it's this kind of stuff. And, and that is, to me, a giant smokescreen to get people who are, are basically taking starvation wages to feel good about what they're doing. To me, it feels like a scam. This is the Gen X in me who believes that, hey, a really good way to manipulate people would be to say, hey, how would you like to strike a blow against the patriarchy and do something that really, you know, boosts LGBTQ content, which will, uh, you know, irritate your parents because they're dickhead Trump Republicans. And, you know, this will allow you to kind of, you know, be also cool because the kids, you know, the kids all love, you know, more alternative stuff. You know how they are always rebelling against shit and all that kind of stuff. So how would you like to feel younger? Because you're in your mid thirties now and you're getting older. You, you found that first gray hair and you're like, oh my God, I'm having to face mortality for the first time. I miss the days when I would just wake up and play Super Nintendo all day. Those were great days. And so I, I'm going to try and recreate that feeling where I have no responsibility and I'm cool and in with kids because I understand the shit they're going with. I'm not ready to face my adulthood. And hey, by the way, I'm also uh, I'm gay, so I would also like to kind of promote LGBTQ content because, you know, that would be good for me and I'd like to do that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'll sign up and write that comic. $60 a page? Fuck yeah, let me in. I'm, I'm in. I'll do that. Sure, why not? And the big corporations like there's another dumb sucker who took shit wages to put out something that doesn't really matter because we don't inherently care. We just need to keep, you know, 80 some comics on the shelves because that's what it is that we do. And, uh, you know, it, you know, well, this person's willing to take, you know, money that is not enough to actually feed or house themselves. But, you know, hey, they're in the comic industry. Good for you, kid. Maybe you should call it the cynical age. Anyway, um, <laughs> I like the Gilded Age. I apologize to the writer of this email who wrote a, a very legitimate, good uh, thought process of where comics are at, and I agree. I think that's a good term, good as any. Why not? And I turned it into this uh, colossal shit show. So I apologize for that. But this is the dynamic that I, I guess just drives me crazy. This is not the kind of thing you're going to hear on a Yellow Flash or That Umbrella Guy or any of these other channels who are uh, going to do that. And it's also not going to, what you're going to hear on Comics Tropes or any of those other people who are like too busy, you know, trying to pat themselves into the back about what comics experts they are. This video is going to get a fairly low amount of views unless I'm smart enough to put something like, Woke SJWs, fuck up comics again on the little headline along with like a picture of Captain Marvel looking all fucked up. So I'll, I'll try and work on that. But the reality is, look, this business, comics, it's beautiful. We really want people to be able to read and be entertained and enjoy comics. I'd like it if, uh, you know, useless, incompetent, you know, shitheads who are making big money, you know, basically don't make that money unless they contribute. By the way, somebody who's making seven figures, eight figures, nine figures, who's actually contributing big things and helping, you know, build a business, get things moving, help, help create, uh, you know, the industry and, and create real value for others. I think, you know, they're worth their weight in gold. Zero problems with them making that money. Please introduce me to the people who are in that category because fuck it if I've met them. Anyway, the Gilded Age. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And thanks for listening.